Okay, so let's overview the interface of Live's Wavetable synthesizer here. So just a quick overview. And one of the things I love about all of the Ableton Live devices is they have this really great way of blending simplicity and user friendliness with kind of a more advanced level of depth. And Wavetable is no exception to that. It's very easy to pick up and you can see everything's very visual. But at the same time, there's a depth to it that is nearly endless if you want to just keep going further and further into either manipulating the wavetables or, um, you know, setting up modulation on the synthesizer or what have you. So let's start over here on the left hand side where we have our oscillators and the signal flow, like in most synthesizers, is going to kind of pass from left to right. We have oscillators on the left hand side. We've got two filters in the middle and then we have envelopes and modulation here on the right hand side. So focusing on the oscillators, we have two selectable oscillators here, which can be toggled on and off using these little yellow buttons. We also have a sub oscillator, which can be activated here uh, by clicking the sub button. You can see that we've got knobs for the gain, the tone of the sub oscillator, and then we can choose its octave tuning. Is it either in tune with the main oscillators or is it pitched an octave or two octaves below those? We can transpose globally the entire synth from here. Uh, each oscillator does have its own independent tuning controls down here for semitone and detuning and sense. Jumping over to the filter, we've got two separate filters and they are multi-mode filters, meaning that we can switch them between, uh, using this drop down here, we can switch between low pass, high pass, band pass, notch, and then this one called a morph filter which uses all the different filter types, but we have, let me move that filter cutoff down so we can see this. You've got this morph control that will kind of blend between all the different filter types, which could be interesting for uh, making some sounds that evolve and change over time. So let's keep it at its default setting, which is the low pass. Um, uh, as I mentioned, there are two filters, so we can toggle the second filter on by using this yellow button here. If you wanna turn filter one off, you can just toggle that off from here. And each filter you can see is displayed here in one single visual display. So if I move the uh, filter one, which is a low pass right now, if I move its frequency or its cutoff dial down, and then I also move the frequency or the cutoff for filter two, you can see how both filters are kind of attached to each other. And visually they show um, in this same little window here. So it's very easy to kind of see what you're doing in terms of sculpting the harmonics and things. Let's turn filter number two off. Stick with filter number one for now. And then we have our main amplifier or amp envelope over here, ADSR controls. So the attack, decay, sustain, and release can be controlled down here by using these sliders. We can also make adjustments like in most of Live's other devices by grabbing these little breakpoints on the envelopes and moving them around. If I wanna adjust the slopes of any of these envelope phases, I can do that by clicking this little yellow diamond and clicking and dragging up or down. We can also switch between being able to edit the times for the, uh, for the envelope or the slopes. And you can see here now attack, decay, and release have a percentage value, which will adjust the percentage of the slope. And this is gonna be universal across all of the envelopes. So we have our main amplifier or volume envelope. Let's bring the sustain back up. Let's switch it back over so we can see the times. Give it a nice fast attack so we can hear what's going on here. Then we have envelope two and three, which are not assigned to anything just yet, but we can use them to modulate any parameter on the synth, just about any parameter. And then we also have two LFOs, also currently not assigned to anything, but uh, can be assigned to nearly any parameter on the synth to modulate. And you'll see here where it says mod sources. Next to that, I've got these two little tabs. We'll click on this one that says matrix. This is gonna show us a basic modulation matrix, or essentially just a list of any parameters that we have set up to get modulated by any of these modulation sources, the envelopes or the LFOs. So for example, if I wanted to modulate the filter cutoff with, uh, with an LFO, let's click on the filter cutoff. And you can see now that I click on it, it shows up here on this list. It says uh, filter one frequency. And if I wanna assign it to one of the LFOs, I just go over here to this list. Let's say we wanna assign it to LFO two, and I can click and drag up or down, and I can assign the modulation from there. Now, if I hold a note down, we have that LFO modulating the filter frequency, and they give us a nice visual of it moving up and down. And uh, next over here, we have this MIDI tab. This is gonna show us MIDI performance controls. So things like the mod wheel on your MIDI keyboard, 
velocity, note, pitch bend, aftertouch. We can use these MIDI control messages to modulate different parameters on the synth as well. So you can actually see already, we've got a mapping here in the default preset, oscillator one position, which is this wavetable position slider here, that comes mapped by default to the mod wheel on the MIDI controller. So I'm gonna reset the wavetable position down to the bottom here. And if I play a note on my keyboard, you can see that I can use the mod wheel if I move it by hand to move through the wavetable position, which is great when you wanna audition wavetables as you start to go through them in the oscillator video coming up soon. Okay, so we've got MIDI control parameters there. And then on the right hand side, we have our master volume output. We can set the polyphony or basically how many voices can be triggered by wavetable. We can go up to eight voices. We can also switch it to monophonic mode, uh, which means we can only play one note at a time. We can no longer play chords, but when monophonic mode is engaged, we can use the portamento or glide setting. From here, we can set the number of milliseconds for portamento. And then on the lower right hand corner, we have our unison detune controls. So I can choose different unison modes from here. Turn my filter cut off up. Let's switch to a saw or a square wave, or maybe we'll go a hybrid square saw. Let me turn the unison off. Let's bypass this uh, filter cutoff modulation. So we'll go back to the matrix window. Here where we see the entry for LFO2, modulating filter one frequency. I'm just gonna double click on that. It'll reset it to zero. Now let's turn one of the unison modes on. And you can hear, if you're listening in headphones, we get this nice kind of widening, thickening effect to the sound. We'll look a little bit more at that when we look at the oscillators. And last thing I wanna point out for this segment here is really nice thing about Wavetable is if you click this little arrow button next to the bypass button, this will actually blow the Wavetable up so we can see all of the different modules on a nice big visual window. Now it does help if you have your browser closed if you have the browser open, you can still open it up, but it kind of squishes everything over to the side. So I'm gonna keep the browser closed so I've got a nice big window. You can also extend this window up or down by clicking and dragging on this sort of bar dividing it from the session view or the arrangement view, if you're in the arrangement view. So we can adjust the sizing of it from there very easily. If you bring it down far enough, it'll just automatically snap back so that we only see the modulation sources and then we can collapse it back down using the arrow from here. As we dive deeper into the synth, I'll probably be using this extended view by clicking that arrow and extending this up. And you can see, we see both of the main oscillators up here on the top. We see all of our modulation sources, our sub oscillator over here to the left. And then down in the device view, we still see the filter and the modulation and MIDI matrix down here on the bottom. So that's our quick overview of Wavetable. When we move on to the next video, we'll get a little bit more in detail on the oscillators and the Wavetables and how to explore those. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.